exciting time to come. FAA mishap investigation of Starship Flight 2 officially concluded, so that doesn't mean Starship will be allowed to launch right away. What will SpaceX need to do next to fully meet launch licensing requirements? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. On February 26, the space community was excited by an official announcement from the FAA. Given that, this national agency has closed the investigation into the second flight of SpaceX's huge Starship vehicle. During the FAA's Commercial Space Transportation Conference on February 21 and 22 in Washington, D.C. Nick Cummings, SpaceX Senior Director of Program Development, cited SpaceX founder and chief engineer Elon Musk as saying the next Starship launch is started for the second week of March. At a press availability later in the day, the Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation at the FAA, Kelvin Coleman, gave an attractive prediction about the upcoming flight. That's where I'm hearing things are headed right now. He said that the possibility of a Starship's launch in March is feasible. So does that mean we're so close to Starship's launch? At some point, it's right. But please read this last bolded line as well. The closure of the mishap investigation does not signal an immediate authorization of the next Starship launch. This makes sense. The mishap investigation is just one of the prerequisites to modification of the launch license. Obviously, any launch will not take place unless a launch license is issued. Prior to the next launch, SpaceX must implement all corrective actions and receive a license modification from the FAA that addresses all safety, environmental, and other applicable regulatory requirements. Agency officials wrote, According to the latest updates, SpaceX identified 17 corrective actions, which the FAA accepted, Seven of them concerned the Booster 9, including vehicle hardware redesigns, updated control system modeling, re-evaluation of engine analyses based on orbital flight test to flight data, and updated engine control algorithms. Chip 25, the vehicle's 165-foot-tall upper stage, deals with the remaining 10 corrective actions. These modifications note vehicle hardware redesigns, operational changes, flammability analysis updates, installation of additional fire protection and guidance and modeling updates, FAA officials wrote. If previously, Elon Musk's rocket company had implemented 63 corrective actions after the first launch, at this time, as far as I understand, there are just 17 ones for SpaceX and yeah, they are done. So what's next? The FAA is evaluating SpaceX's license modification request and expects SpaceX to submit additional required information before a final determination can be made, said the agency in the statement. According to the FAA a few days ago, SpaceX hasn't submitted its investigation report into the failure that occurred during the second integrated flight of Starship and the Super Heavy booster. To be fair, the post-launch investigation requires data from both sides and the lack of information from SpaceX appears to have slowed progress. For a firm that is always quick in everything and aims for its next flight as soon as possible, SpaceX's slowness, in this case, seems puzzling. Perhaps it could be an intentional activity for an unknown reason. In addition, the FAA also noted more, the FAA was involved in every step of the mishap investigation and granted NASA and the National Transportation Safety Board official observer status. This means that not only the FAA but the other parties like NASA or the National Transportation Safety Board are also special guests visiting Starbase during this period. In fact, yesterday we saw Texas Parks and Wildlife is back out to the launch area. Looks like they're going to pick up some more rocks. Anyway, both Elon Musk's confidence and NASA Administrator Kelvin Coleman's recent statement suggest the process is snowballing. Based on my speculation, the FAA launch permit will be issued by the second week of March. So how about you? When will Starships' launch license be granted? Don't hesitate to drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Next, before going any further, if you found this information useful, remember to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now let's go back to today's episode. Okay, let's move to hardware. The goal was for the hardware for Flight 3 would be ready in February and the fact has shifted a little bit. After two wet dress rehearsal, WDR aborts, SpaceX came up with a wise decision to destack Ship 28 from Booster 10. At present, the Super Heavy is in the production site 
and could be checked for some errors in the last WDR while Starship has been placed onto the suborbital pad B for more testing. CHIP-28 has experienced several tests such as the ignited test and especially the spin prime test. The spin prime test, expected to be the final test before the engine static fire, was a vital test to verify the health of each Raptor on S-28. A spin prime test involves spinning up the turbo pumps on an engine. In the case of SpaceX, this test involves the tanking of liquid oxygen and methane into either a ship or booster. Usually, these tests are easy to predict based on the amount of propellants loaded and if an overpressure notice to local residents is present or not. After tanking is complete, the vehicle will spin up its respective amount of engines in the same ignition sequence it will follow in a static fire. This allows SpaceX to gather as much data as possible on the engine's behavior and the overall start sequence without actually igniting anything. In mid-February, SpaceX attempted a full WDR. It started off with loading Ship 28 with liquid oxygen before holding and detanking shortly into the process. Two days later, its Booster 10's turn involving loading a small amount of propellant before once again detanking. What caused the abort of WDR? We don't know yet, but we're assured that the problem is with the vehicle, not the launch pad. It explains why both OLM and OLIT continued to be tested afterward, whereas the Starship's lower stage was back to the Mega Bay. Keep in mind that this isn't the first time both stages of Starship have been destacked for upgrades or repairs, and the issues this time might not be too serious. So, once all are completed, which could take a few weeks, we will see another WDR happen soon. Hopefully, everything goes smoothly and Booster 10 and Ship 28 could launch in mid to late March as expected. It can be said that the pre-launch actions this time in terms of both paperwork and hardware are not as difficult as the previous two times. Because OFT2 launched on November 18, 2023, got closer to reaching orbit than the first attempt seven months earlier. These Starship test flights will not actually make an orbit of the Earth, but go about three-quarters of the way around the globe eastward from SpaceX's Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas to an ocean splashdown near Hawaii. Although fell short of its goal, Flight 2 successfully demonstrated several upgrades SpaceX made after the first failure, including hot staging where the second stage began firing its engines before saying goodbye to the first stage to reduce the loss of velocity when the stages separated. However, after the separation, Ship 25 exploded. Elon Musk, in a January 2024 update at Starbase, revealed that the vented liquid oxygen that led to a fire and an explosion is the main culprit for Ship's failed attempt to reach orbit. He added, Ironically, if it had a payload, it would have reached orbit. Meaning that they would not have vented the liquid oxygen if a payload had been aboard. This led to the speculation that Ship 28 would have a payload in its next flight, but in fact, it would not. Instead, the additional pipes would be connected directly to the liquid oxygen tank, so the discharged oxygen would flow through the pipes to the outside instead of back inside the engine bay. Today, more details were updated by SpaceX. Booster 9 was lost when several engines began shutting down before one engine failed energetically, quickly cascading to a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Are UD of the booster most likely because of filter blockage where liquid oxygen is supplied to the engines? Ship 25 flew nominally for seven minutes until liquid oxygen venting began and a leak in the aft section resulted in a combustion event and subsequent fires that led to a loss of communications followed by a commanded shutdown of all six engines prior to completion of the ascent burn. As a result, the flight termination system was triggered at an altitude of approximately 150 kilometers and a velocity of about 24,000 kilometers per hour. The altitude helped Starship to mark a new record as this was the first time it reached space, even though it did not attain orbit. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you next time.